Uh, uh, practice within when you're without. Okay. It's one of my five credos. Practice being successful. How many people listening to this today practice being successful today? What, what does it mean to practice being okay, successful? Okay, okay. Through affirmations, through going to the Rolls Royce dealer, if, maybe Lamborghini, maybe something else. Right. In my particular case, it was Rolls Royce. And within a year of me going to the Rolls Royce dealer, I had a Rolls. Okay. Within. 19 months of me uh, dreaming and uh, adding it to my goals, a castle on an island, I own Guthrie Castle. Go to stores you can't afford. Okay. Go, uh, go um, hire lawyers you can't afford. Go hire them. Oh no, I'm gonna use them. I'm okay, use them. Uh, lawyers will meet with anybody. Accountants will meet with anybody. Go to the big four accountants uh, with a business idea. The first couple meetings are for free. Uh, uh, jettison probably a lot of the people you hang around with. Um, you know, uh, if you have poor public speaking skills, uh, join Toastmasters. Right. Uh, Is that still uh, around? Yep. Okay. Join Improv. Uh, so it's it's all possible. But I, you know, I devoted myself uh, to feeling successful. I was wearing suits like this before I could afford them. Mm -hmm. How'd you get them? I credit cards. Right. So, act, as they say in Hollywood, act as if. Correct. In a way, okay. Correct. Right. Uh, if you could pick up the phone and make a phone call to the 20 year old Dan Pena, uh, that's almost 50 years ago, right? 64, 63, something like that. Um, what advice would you give that young man? It's the same advice that I give and the best advice that I got. Just do it. <laughs> that's it. Do it. It's like the Nike slogan, but with correct, the, except with the bad word. With a bad word in there. What is the best advice you've ever received? Uh, most people procrastinate because they're unsure, so just do it. He said the same thing, and uh, but I, I've never had a problem just doing it, because one of the things is you learn as a young uh, combat infantry officer is time costs lives. Fred Smith, who I like a lot, who is a uh, similarly trained officer like I was, who was a Marine officer, he said, when I got back out of school, when I learned that mistakes weren't causing arms and legs and life and death, huh, making decisions was easy. Similar for me. Uh, we overanalyze because we're unsure. We're not overanalyze. We don't overanalyze because we are not sure um, if it'll work or not. We're more worried about on the emotional side it embarrassing us I, I treat everybody the same okay with disrespect release your brakes are you old enough to have uh, uh driven a car that had emergency brakes that don't automatically go off when you put it in drive you're probably too young no i remember that er, uh, yeah you had okay a emergency but just brake. imagine you drove your car through life with the emergency brake on it's bad for the transmission, it's bad for the tires, it's bad for the universal, it's bad for everything. Right. And you never really then it. you take, oh geez, the emergency brake's on. Then you release the brake. What happens? Whew, surge ahead. Right? Yeah. Most of us go through life with our emergency brakes on. This is most of us keep the emergency brake on because we want a reason not to test ourselves. Uh, I've tried a lot of things. Nobody's failed at more things than I have. And the first hundred million are successes, but I could write a book about failures that would be like Churchill's volumes, the history of World War II. I mean, because I've tried a lot of different things. Because test, failure is just testing. And uh, one of the reasons I've been so successful in generating this equity and value in my kids, and I call you all kids, is because I convince them that making a mistake is okay. Our parents tell, your parents probably told you, you can be anything you want. They did. That's it. It's a very American thing. Yeah, but you can't. That's <laughs> You can't. If it's all juxtaposed, you can do anything you want that you have passion for. Because that eliminates most of the crap. Because most people don't follow their dream. You can't have a dream come true unless you have a dream. Now, I still dream. I dream in Technicolor. I say my affirmations and goals every single night. Um, well, I was taught by some very smart people a long, long time ago. I used to be with the Onassis Group. It's the CEO of Onassis uh, Shipping, who was the right-hand man for 60 years of Aristotle Onassis. Onassis, right, the Greek uh, shipping. Yeah, he right. says, Dan, just remember, 
Dress British and think Yiddish. <laughs> I've never heard that. Yes. But I like that. Yeah. What, what does that mean? That means, well, dress British. Right. You know, uh, not being braggadocious, but this is a Savile Road suit. You right. Know? Very formal. Yes. And uh, and think Yiddish. Think can, in a canny manner. Uh, think shrewdly. Um, right. Nothing derogatory at all. It's actually, it's a great compliment. Most of you lack the skills to sell your vision with clarity. Because you don't practice, and, and, and the travesty really is, is because you don't believe enough in it. You just don't. And if what you're trying to finance isn't your dream, isn't your vision, I mean, the banker or the person on the other side of the table sees through it clearly. They know just absolutely, definitively. Because at the end of the day, they want to feel down deep inside, warm and fuzzy, that this person or this person will do whatever it takes to pay me back the money. And if you don't believe with all your heart, then you're not going to, you know, go that extra mile. That's what they want to believe. And most of you don't believe passionately in what you're doing. And that's why it's very easy for me to say you ought to turn the damn key. Just walk away. And look for something that you can passionately believe in. Is that so difficult?